Okay, a couple of things that we would want to uh, describe about uh, different types of radiation are um, how far they can travel in air, uh, how far they can penetrate uh, your skin or tissue, uh, tissues within your skin, uh, what type of shielding we would need, and then a couple of different uh, sources uh, where they can be emitted from. Okay, so alpha particle is the uh, largest particle that's uh, typically emitted by nuclear radiation. Um, therefore, it runs into things uh, quite a bit uh, more often, and so it has the lowest um, or the smallest travel distance in there, uh, approximately two to four centimeters. Um, so it doesn't travel very far, uh, but it does have the uh, highest ionizing power of all the types of radiation, and so it can be quite um, uh, troublesome if it's ingested. The beta particle uh, can travel uh, quite a bit farther, t uh, you know, a hundred times farther, so 200 uh, to uh, three or 400, or excuse me, 300 centimeters. Uh, the gamma ray, or really gamma particle, really just electromagnetic radiation, can travel the farthest, uh, up to 500 um, meters uh, in the in the air. So uh, quite a, di a large distance, half a kilometer. Uh, as uh, can be expected, uh, the tissue depth uh, would follow the same pattern, where the alpha particle, since it's the largest, would run into things a lot uh, quickly. More quickly, it has the uh, least uh, um, distance that it can travel through tissue, only going about 0.05 millimeters. Whereas the uh, beta particle uh, can travel uh, 4 to five millimeters into the tissue and of course the gamma ray uh, can travel the furthest uh, greater than 50 centimeters or uh, half a meter and then of course uh, we need the least amount of shielding for the alpha particles and the most for uh, gamma rays uh, the alpha particle can be uh, stopped by using just uh, you know thick sheets of paper or clothing. Whereas the uh, beta particles, both, um, the beta particle needs um, heavy clothing. Um, lab coat would be useful here. And of course, we would need uh, gloves handling this type of radioactive material. Uh, the gamma, gamma ray uh, need uh, very thick uh, concrete or even uh, metals like lead, thick pieces of lead um, to stop it. And then sources for alpha particles, um, radium-226 is a very common, is a common uh, source for alpha particles, beta particles, carbon-14, uh, used for carbon-14 dating, and then uh, a very uh, common uh, gamma ray emitter that's used in the medical uh, field is technetium-99. All right, so um, since we uh, have to take these safety precautions, we have, might want to talk about why we need to do so. And so the next topic we could talk about is how does radiation affect cells? Well, essentially, whatever type of radiation um, that uh, hits your cells, um, depending on uh, its ionization power, uh, it will do it more or less. But when it uh, strikes a molecule inside of your body uh, it will either it will often um, you know ionize the molecule create a charged particle or even sometimes it can create what is known as a free radical a molecule with an odd electron most of the time the uh, damage is done by ionizing um, the molecules. So now you have a charged uh, species. 
Uh, both of these are very reactive. A free radical or an ion in your body are very reactive. And so uh, it can um, then go on to cause more damage by reacting with neighboring molecules uh, in your body. Additionally, whatever this molecule is, whether it be DNA or a protein, um, it loses its functionality once it's been ionized. So it essentially stops working, which of course is not good. And so um, it uh, has a, causes a couple of problems. Not only does this molecule lose its uh, um, functionality, whatever it's doing, um, it can also cause more damage by reacting uh, with other molecules inside of the cell.